Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another great arcade game video for you this evening. Look what we found. This is Tato's 1988 Chase HQ. What a cool game. We've had these before, but we never were able to get them working. But guess what? We got this one working. So we'll talk about that a little bit. But this was a really cool game. I think Super Chase we've had before and we did a video of. And I believe Super Chase was on the uh, Super Nintendo. I don't know what system they brought out Chase HQ for besides the arcade. But uh, this thing's really cool. We picked it up from a gentleman a while back. Uh, and it wasn't working. It had a couple problems. So these games, you know, as the years have went on, we've got slightly better at fixing stuff. And these games originally... Um, had a problem, well not originally, but after a, after a while these games have a problem with some RAM chips on the board. There's, If you've got one of these and it's coming up with an error and saying RAM error, there if you look on the schematics you can figure out which RAM is which and it checks a whole bunch of them. But there's there are RAM on the PCB board that are labeled TMM2063. And if you've got any of those on the PCB board, they very well might be bad. So we figured out that this one had a, uh, it was saying common RAM error. And we were like, common? What's common about it? But they actually have RAM that is called the common RAM on the uh, on the game board. And two, they had two of them right in the middle of the, of the uh, top board. And it was, uh, they were TMM 2063s and we were reading online online. Everybody's saying those chips are failing a lot so we checked and sure enough one of them looked like it had a little corrosion on it actually so I don't know if it was the design of the chip that made it bad if you know if it's got corrosion probably uh, just heard the the uh, cops <laughs> if, if it's got corrosion on the chip it's probably not a fault of the chip it's just it shouldn't have corrosion on it so we replaced that chip and got it going again check out the side art on this I believe although I haven't found any pictures but I'm thinking that maybe his jacket was pink or something you know it almost looks like a faded pink I don't know but uh, really cool art this is the original dedicated cabinet we put a little yellow tea molding on it just to spice it up a little bit because the uh, original black tea molding that always just looks so dark to us and you know we make it look a little more a uh, little more fun on some games we leave it like that, but we thought yellow would look good, and we, you know, it turned out turned out pretty nice. But this was such a cool game. Basically, you are a cop, like we just heard outside driving by, and you are hunting down the bad guys. And whenever you find them, like he just did on the screen, the way you capture them is you run into their damn car. <laughs> and so you just run into their car over and over again. And they're considered like a boss character at the end of each of each uh, road. And whenever you hit them enough for that little meter on the left to go all the way to the top, they pull over and then you arrest them. What a great idea for a uh, for a, an arcade game. It has this weird thing it does too. Like see that Chase HQ. Every time it comes up on the title screen it displays that a different way so originally it kind of swoops in and then it comes in from the side and then it comes in upside down and it kind of bounces in one time I believe one of our uh, commenters on YouTube here was saying that these are called sprite scalers I believe and they're pretty cool we've been doing a lot of driving games lately so um, but we, like I said, we haven't ever had one of these that actually worked, so we were we were excited to get it going again. After we after we replaced that RAM chip on the board, it had a little error where some of the graphics weren't quite right. They were the wrong graphic, and we kept looking and looking and looking, and we finally found that on the bottom board there was a trace connecting one pin to another that that uh, had uh, a little bit of corrosion on it where it was not no longer connected. So it. Uh, we figured that out, put a little jumper wire, and bam, it's ready to go. So we'll read the instructions. They are right here. And it's a uh, look at the Lamborghini. How do you pronounce that? Kuntak. 
All right, how to play, folks. The player is driving an unmarked patrol car and must chase and apprehend various criminals according to headquarter radio contact. Chase HQ is different from normal driving games in that the player must do more than win a race. You hear that? He must locate the target vehicle, catch up to it, and render it inoperable by crashing into it over and over again. <laughs> the distance from the suspect car and player car is shown on the map at the right-hand side of the screen. When the player has caught up to the suspect car, the dome light is placed on the patrol car and the timer is extended. Oh yeah, we got to talk about that. During the extended time period, the player must continuously crash into the target vehicle until the damage meter on the left-hand side of the screen has indicated the vehicle is inoperable. The player is given three bursts of turbocharge in each round, which is activated by the shift knob button. Little spoiler alert, folks. There was a dip switch to make it five, and so I did the deed. So we've got five turbos, and I set it on easy. To hell with it. It's my game, people. I can do what I want with it. Okay, so we got five bursts of turbocharge in each round, which is activated by the shift knob button. Uh, uh. The game ends when timer reaches zero or the player has cleared all five rounds. All right. I'm going to say one last thing about the electronics, just in case somebody's watching this video in the future trying to fix theirs. The steering wheel, there were two steering wheels. One of them stops. This one doesn't. See how it just keeps going? So if you've got the one that stops uh, in the manual, it doesn't say anything about the different steering wheels, but in the manual it says that dip switch one and two have to be off for the game to work. It's, about, it's They're talking about the steering wheel. If it has one of these steering wheels, the 360 wheel, then you have to set dip switch one. Uh, it's, it says switch A, the very first one, you have to turn it on. If you turn it on, it, it tells it that it has this 360 degree steering wheel. And the reason that's important is if you leave that off, whenever you use this steering wheel, uh, you'll have to turn about twice to get your car to turn on the screen a little bit. So if you're having problems where it's doing that, turn on the first dip switch. Took us hours to figure that out, people. Okay, so I was also gonna mention up at the top here, one of the little things that they added to the cabinet was it has wigwag lights at the top. So whenever the game comes on, I mean, uh, whenever you get behind the uh, suspect, those start flashing back and forth. Really cool. There's a little board inside of it that makes it do that. And I, I think they call those wigwag lights. But um, And I believe the Super Chase that we had does the same thing that we had a while back. We've never had an SCI that works, but if we ever get one of those, which was the second game, Special Criminal Investigation, if we ever get one of those, we'll uh, shoot a video of it as well. So what I'll do is I'll turn the lights off, and I'll film those... I'll turn the game on because whenever it turns on, it, the little wigwag lights work just to show you that they're working. So I'll, I'll uh, turn the lights off, turn the game back on so you can see the lights, what they do, just so you get the whole uh, effect, you know. Uh, and then we'll set up the tripod and play through it a little bit. All right, so just uh, to illustrate, this is what they do. How cool is that? That's very cool. All right, folks. I'm gonna go up just a little bit more because where it says distance there. There, I think that's better. It says credit down there, you don't really need that, but up there it says distance. And that tells you how far away from the car you are. Instructions. You've got a finely tuned sports car with a custom gear shift with two speed high and low. The button on the shift knob is for a five second high power boost of nitro fuel, which can only be used five times in any one mission. Your mission is to catch criminals, blah, 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 blah. The di distance between you and the criminal, the criminal, is at the top right. You've got 70 seconds to get the job done. Did you see the burn in? There's a little bit of burn in right over here. Can you tell what game that's from? So basically this monitor was in a different game at some point. We didn't have nothing to do with it, people. It's like that when we got it. All right, I'm gonna put a credit on it. We're gonna play through it a little bit. If I can reach my foot 
around the leg of the tripod. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Ralph, Idaho's Nancy. Hey, 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 British sports car. I can't see the top of the screen, people. How far away are we? Oh, clip them. Oh, clip them again. suspicion of first degree murder gotcha punk that's what i should have said turbo punk <laughs> Robert has been spotted in a yellow sports car on the freeway. Over. We read loud and clear. Over. We read loud and clear. Giddy up, boy. Giddy up, boy. For a Japanese game, they got some really good voice actors. Giddy up, boy.
You're under arrest on suspicion of armed robbery and murder. <laughs> all right, people. Some folks are outside. They want to come in. So we got to stop all the playing. This is Nancy at State Headquarters. We've got an emergency here. A gang of Chicago prisoners are fleeing towards the suburbs. The target vehicle is a German sports car. Over. Leave it to us, Nancy baby. Nancy baby. <laughs> hey, Nancy baby. Yeah. Hold on, man. Punch the pedal. Punch the pedal. What a cool game. All right, folks, so there you have it. That's Chase HQ from 1988. Now, by the time you see this video, we may not have it anymore. It may have drove off to someone else's game room. But you can see all of the games that we do have available for sale on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. It's always up to date. Get a move on, buddy. <laughs> and uh, shows all of the games that we have available. Now, if you're local, you can come by and see us during business hours, please. Uh, we're open from 11 to 8, Monday through Saturday, so stop by and check us out. We've got a whole building full of arcade games for sale. I'm here a little bit late tonight trying to film this video for you. Now, if, you, if you're not going to come by because you don't live anywhere near here, Get a move on, buddy. and you don't want to buy one off the website, that's fine. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube. And uh, every time we get one of these videos uh, filmed, it will let it will let you know. Time's going to run out. Over. I think it is about to run out. Your time's up. Oh, they're trying to get the extra quarter. All right, so make sure to give us a thumbs up taking all the trouble to film this for you and uh, if you want to know about the burn-in that I was mentioning you can see it a little bit see you later. the game that it was out of is an operation wolf right you can tell with all the little missiles if you go back and watch the video you might see some spots where you can tell but uh, leave, leave your comments below give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you and we will see you on the next video